Hello everybody, what's up? Cedric and CJ here, CR Wrestling Commentary, and we'll be reviewing last week's Friday night Smackdown-ish. Uh, and, you know, and, and along the way, we'll, I guess we'll try to get Cedric to pronounce the Hurricane's name because she is failing at it. it it's, it's Hurricane Barrel, and it's what, Category 5 now? Or it's it? back down to a 4 last I oh, saw. Oh, it's back down to a 4. Mm-hmm. Okay. Excellent. It's not so overkilling. Not so much. Not so much. It's, un it's, it's slightly less overkilling. Burl. It's Beryl. <laughs> Beryl like, like Sailor Moon, Queen Beryl. Uh -huh. Burl. <laughs> so look, we're going to get into this. So the show opens with, uh, with the SUV rolling up on Paul Heyman and all but Jacob exit. So, you know, that's kind of a letdown. Paul kindly asks where Jacob is, where the fans chant, they want Roman. And I had to know that I'm starting to think the fans never wanted Roman back, but they chanted just to irritate Solo. I'd be fine with that. As the bloodline make their entrance, Cody, Randy, and Kevin show up and the fans are all about it. Of course they are. <laughs> it's a fight. And the faces want revenge. Okay, makes sense, right? Okay. The bloodline get beat down with ease as per usual. I don't see how the how I don't see how the bloodline can be seen as a force when they just get their asses whooped regularly. Yeah, how can you be the infamous right hand if you're not doing well? You know, and Tom he's he's wearing, you know, his MF T shirt. Motherfucking Tom, you know, so there we go. Uh so Kevin hits the Santon bomb on Loa from the balcony. So they had to do that stupid stuff. And then security come out after all the damage has been done. The heels look super weak and the faces retain owning the ring. Cody wants a six man tag match and Aldis keeps rejecting the notion. Good for Aldis. And they still in the ring. A security, a security grunt enters. Like you could just tell, okay, this is just fodder. It was just <laughs> obvious. You know, but then he gets age crushed and then security enters fighting. Well, not really fighting, but they just get fin a finisher bonanza for the faces to stand strong. Because, you know, they beat up some, as some would say, job guys and whatnot. Beat up enhancement talent. Yeah. The faces on the ring and talk up their accolades. That's about all they did. Cody says he doesn't see a leader in Sokoa, but a seat filler. I was like, that's Ooh. cold. Aldis comes back with New York cops, and we know they're fake because when the faces didn't follow orders instantly, they didn't get beat up and or shot. Yeah, yeah. That's what cops do. And if you're a cop listening, fuck you. <laughs> Just saying. You know, cops don't have a good record. And at first it was one group. Now it's everybody. That's every group. That was everybody. Everybody getting monkey stomped. Yep. Everybody getting tased, shot, beat up, you know, um, unalived in certain situations mm -hmm. in prison. You know? Yeah. So, nah. <laughs> and I had to note, I can see Cody being a good to great heel. Yes. He was fired up and believable in, in his promo. He was, he was there. All this sees the faces to the bat where they pull off an SUV and leave. Okay. Whole thing is over. At least for now. Mm hmm Okay, everybody. I ain't, mm -mm. I'm not, you know, this is SmackDown-ish. Women's Money in the Bank qualifier. Uh, Three-way match, Tiffany Stratton, Candice LeRae, and Jade Cargill. I mainly watched because of Cargill. We want to see her progress. Yep. You can tell she's working. You can so, tell she's working. They have a match. They're doing their things. Tiffany Stratton got a nice upper body build. Her shoulders are wide, broad, you know. Chest is, she's, she's built up. Got no memory of who she is. Oh, she looks like almost everybody else. But you got to stare at her and be like, there you go. Oh, okay. Does she have on red? I think. I don't know. It's, it's, been, it's been seven days. Okay. Um. Nia Jax comes to the ring for some reason, I guess to make sure Jay loses. Bianca comes down and only argues with the queen of rigidness, 
So that's that's how I view Nia Jax. Just rigid. Jade planned to attack Nia from behind, but Hartwell attacked her from behind and Belair chases her off. With Jade down, Tiffany gets the win. And that's that. And that's not the end of it. But we're going to the men's Money in the Bank qualifying match. Santos Escobar versus LA Knight versus, well, we got to pause for bloodline business because that's exactly how they did it. <laughs> we got these two out. Let's show some bloodline stuff. All right. <laughs> so in the I back. I would be mad about that. <laughs> in, the, in the back, after commercial, Paul Heyman informed Solo that the faces have been removed from Madison Square Garden. He pleads as the wise man to serve Sokoa, and he asks where Jacob is. Some of you might want to know too, but Haman isn't asking for that reason. He's asking out of fear. Jacob is the poisonous spider in your home. You saw it. Look for something to kill it, and now it's gone. Yes. Where is it? That's no good. <laughs> Sokoa says Paul is the wise man, and, he, and it makes no sense to have one and not listen to him, so... He's listening. And you can see Paul being a little bit like, oh, okay, finally. He says that he did listen, so Jacob isn't there. Solo says that he will officially make Paul Heyman his wise man tonight. So now we're unpaused for disrespecting for the, <clears throat> unpaused for disrespecter of the forlorn dead. Because the third person in that Money in the Bank is Logan Paul. And I wrote that I suspect Knight to win just to... Oh, yeah, I'm not letting that go. That's what Logan Paul did. Fuck him. Um, I suspect L.A. Knight to win just to get his hands on Logan after he wins Money in the Bank. I'm just blind spitballing since I don't care for Logan. <laughs> Knight wins with an O'Connor roll on Logan Paul. I, I did not necessarily see that coming. So then the basketball people that they talked up, they get into, they get involved for a good argument. The fans could sense nothing would happen and started booing. So there goes your old school WCW Nitro moment. Oh, where you get some sports celebrity to come in and do nothing. There you go. Okay. okay. They get in the ring. They have a little talk, talk. Nothing really happens. And the fans start booing because they knew nothing was going to happen. Yeah, it's done. It's a waste of time. So... After that, I, this is, I just wrote this shortly because this was really done well. WWE pays respect to um, Sika, father of Roman Reigns, who, who, who passed. It was, it was a great review, review. And, you know, honestly, I did get to see them in action when I had no clue of what wrestling was. But that's not, per, not up at an arena, but thumbing through TV channels and whatnot. And you're a little kid. Who, what group was Sika a part of? Wild Samoans. Okay. Um, Alpha, Sika. And I've seen them in the NWA um, Samoan SWAT team and that's, stuff like that. That's what I was remembering him from. Very, okay. Cool. I, see, I saw them in other promotions and a few times in WWE, but that was before Superstars and such in the late 80s. I always thought that was a cool name. The Samoan SWAT team? Yeah. Because they were, man, they, the way they worked then is the way you can see the stylings. Dwayne Johnson didn't get it. He doesn't wrestle that style. He doesn't, but you can see it in Jacob. You can see it in Rikishi. You can you can see that stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. You can see it. It's cool. Does Dwayne wrestle more like his father or something? More, yeah. Okay. But yet his own style is, you know, that's, that's one reason why The Rock progressed into a megastar. Just like Taker, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and a few others, Steve Austin, because you could see their style was outside of everybody else's. It's not moves. For example, a body slam. You've seen a wrestler do a body slam multiple times, right? Mm-hmm. But then you see Kane do it. And you can see that he does it with some authority. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
the thrusting spine buster. You've seen that done many times, but when Ron Simmons did it, it was completely different. Yeah. You've seen, you've seen power slams. Many of them. Dustin's is just next level. Yeah. And I don't think anyone's going to touch it, even though Sawyer innovated it. But Ron Simmons, when he did a power slam, it was like, stay down, bro. It was different. The just rock. Just like when Samoa hmm. Joe does a power slam. It's different. Okay, I understand what you're saying about style. It's a style. The rock, when you can, you can see him getting ready to do something. He's got that half squat. His feet are, you know, just bouncing in the ring. Mm-hmm. He's hiking up his, his warm-ups a little bit. He's crouched. He's ready. You can see it. That's his style. You can see it. It's like this is where their charisma comes out. It's them, you their have, personality. Yeah, because you got people who get in the ring and you're like, these people have been trained to wrestle and they are doing it. It's like everybody else. And then those others who do it different. They do it completely different. It's their personality right there on their wrestling sleeve. It equates to making a song your own. Exactly. If you sing it the same way, then what way have you sung it? <laughs> you sing it your way, then you're singing it. And see, that goes into the problem that I have with little men in wrestling. Here you go. No, no, no. Stop it's, picking on little people. I'm not talking people on little people. I'm talking about little men. It's a difference. I'm talking, about, I'm talking about narrow in the waist, not short in height. Yeah, we're we, we going to get on that because Zimmer rips into you and does it justly, too. Okay, that's cool. But... That's, that's going to be, it's not going to be in SmackDown. They're going to be responding to the viewers. That's, going, that's where that's going to be, y'all. But go ahead. Go when, ahead. When Lucha got exposed to the entire world, it was like, okay, With now who? look, Lucha. Lucha, okay, yeah, Lucha. Lee Little back. guys can do it, too. And that's great. But the problem is they all do it the same way. Yeah. You can just trade them in and out. So what's special? And that's been become abundantly clear abundantly especially with AEW but it's and and, uh, and also on uh the bed, what's the other one that we watch TNA yeah it's like what's where is your personality you're just doing the moves you do you know but it's not showing personality I forgot who I think Sanjay Dutt and one other was able to do the Frankensteiner but land on their feet. Yeah, I think that did do that. You know, and that was really cool. Not many were able to do that. Ray Mysterio Jr. did it a few times, depending upon the height of the opponent. Just that AJ, he did all that high flying shit, but it was different. Yes, you could see it. It was you could feel different. it. it yeah. Was, yes. When he gears up to do it, it's his own. Mm-hmm. When he does it, it's his own. I was, yes, you got it. Hope everybody else out there got it. But just to finish off what I was saying, I think I, you know, saying that I saw SST and whatnot. You know, not. I, I remember I wanted to see them against the Road Warriors. I never. I don't know if I ever saw that or not, because a lot of pay per views that happened, I couldn't. I couldn't get them. I didn't know. I didn't know know where it was. You know, we didn't even have cable. Mm-hmm. You know, so that it was gonna be a while. Um, let's see. Hold on, let me. I cannot see the whole screen. There we go. Now we get to women's Money in the Bank qualifier. So we got Indy Hartwell already in the ring versus Blair Davenport. That just sounds so generic, Disney. Mm-hmm. Versus <clears throat> Naomi. <laughs> So I wrote, I think Naomi will pin Indy just so Indy can beef with Bianca. Again, just spitballing here. I've not followed these women and I don't plan on it. Jay comes out and pops Hartwell in justified retaliation and Naomi hits a kick, a bubble bomb, and rolls into a body scissors hold to get the win. So now Naomi can go lose that money in the bank. All right. Because it's what I told you she was good for. She can beat the little squabs, get into a good situation, and lose. What's a squab? Isn't that kind of bird or something? Yeah. Okay. Nothing important. It's just there. 
She can beat those. You know, but then they put her against a crow, a raven, a hawk, an eagle. Leave the squabs alone. <laughs> there you are. There, you know, that's about how that is. Okay, so then we get back to bloodline business. So the bloodline come out. Tama is wearing the motherfucking Tonga shirt and Tonga is holding his ribs. Yeah, he is. He's got his suit on, but he's like, yeah, my ribs are hurting. That's a professional, y'all. Yeah. That's a professional. He's selling what happened earlier. And then, you know, the AEW, their people can't even sell being burnt up. <laughs> now nah, they come back. You got burned. You don't come back from burn. You burn up. Go to the trauma center. <laughs> get some skin graft or something. Yeah. And get your clothes cut off. Take, it, take a year to, to come back. <laughs> That's what burn does. Next time, don't come out glistening. Anyway, what, what would you go say? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Do not jump the gun. I have a gun thing I do. Don't jump over it. So Paul goes into his introduction and plan to put over the arena when Sokoa cuts him off. <sighs> so then he intro Sokoa introduces his enforcer, the Samoan werewolf, Jacob Fatu. So everybody's happy now. You know, now fans might have been booing, but they, they won't because they really love him because they don't have a choice. <laughs> so Jacob has slimmed all the way down. I oh. can really see it. All the way down. All the way down. I'm like, man, what's did, your what secret? You Tell me about it. What did you do? Because his whole midsection is like it's, 40% it, of what it was. They shaved it off. <laughs> just took a knife and just hack, 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 yeah. hack, hack. He's like, good, I feel better now. Um, his arm's about the same size, if not a little bigger. So he, he's doing his thing. Mm -hmm. So now, so he enters and they take a break. I can't see how one can go to commercial on Jacob. <laughs> Sokoa takes on Roman's spot of calling out the city and telling them to acknowledge him. And he does it in a way of, I know I'm finna get heat and I have to do the WWE thing of yelling at the part that you're supposed to be the most interested in. You know, Madison Square Garden's, acknowledge me! <laughs> and they're like, boo. And I was like, you just bored me. That's, that's <laughs> where I was. You just bored me. Let's see what you can do, you know. So he calls for each of the bloodline to acknowledge him. And they do, I love you, man. And I acknowledge you as my leader. It's like, all right. So y'all got to do that. Yeah. For, for, for this blonde Samoan. Uh... Okay. If he's Samoan, if he's Tongan, if he's an islander of any descent. No, I ain't looking him up. Don't care. He's got blonde in his hair. Just no. <laughs> I haven't looked up Tama, Tonga, Tonga Loa, or none of them. Hikaleu, I'd have it. You know, we had Kevin Kelly for that. Where is he? Because he's good. Mm -hmm. He annoys the shit out of me, but he's good. Oh, he's getting ready for a G1. Oh, so he's back there. I, I think I think he's been going back and forth. Probably I don't. Oh think no, they got rid of him from New Japan. From, got rid of Kevin Kelly. No, no AEW. Oh, okay. So then he's probably getting ready for the G One. <laughs> well, all right then. <laughs> okay. So Solo steps to Heyman and asks him to acknowledge him. The fans go nuts. They are like, "No, don't do it." And you can tell Heyman has reservations. He's a little conflicted. Solo is handed leadership. The the is handed the leadership lay uh, that Roman war and hands it to Paul, who is in shock. And Paul says that he loves him, and he acknowledges that he is not his tribal chief. And Paul takes the Samoan spike, and it's time to show up because they send Jacob up. Who does a diving headbutt on Heyman? I was like, he gonna splash him? What's he gonna do? And he hit the headbutt. And look, it looked so believable. It looked so good. Mm -hmm. But I could see how he took such sweet care of Paul. Oh, yeah. I could see all of that at the same time. I was like, 
maybe I've seen too much. <laughs> so y'all y'all gotta see men at work for that to be funny. Oh man, that's old, that's old school. It's back in the day. That's yes, yes. Just pizza delivery scene, men at work. You'll crack up. Yes. The fans are all messed up. They clear off the table with Tama guiding them. They powerbomb Paul onto the announce table, breaking it. He falls back. He is like high angled on his shoulders. I'm like, oh my God, Paul took a bump. He did. The fans chant, holy shit, which I thought was stupid. And Jacob adorns the lay on Solo Sokoa and they stand united in scene. <laughs> Is that cheapen it? <laughs> Look, ain't it odd and funny how I said what they need to do, the thing that Sokoa has to do that, but that no one does it, and yeah. then he comes out and do it. He put hands on Paul. Yeah, but he dropped him. <sighs> it's look, everybody was pissed. They were angry. It got heat. Yeah. Paul Heyman was a clear baby face. Paul, he, he, he pulled everyone's sympathies onto him. So this was a good moment, a, the right time for Sokoa to actually do something himself. There's just a problem. Yeah. Is that it's Sokoa that did it. Yeah. If Look. Jacob did it, well, he's already over. They already, this dude is crazy. The Tongans, you know, the Gorillas of Destiny, they're like, this dude is nuts. I don't know about this. I feel unsafe. <laughs> unsafe working environment. Listen. If, you know, listen. if any one of them did it, yeah, but they're already, they're, you know, they're over. They, people already know what's up. Solo, he is literally like the mean boy jock that should be in West Side Story. <laughs> Just, we're going to kick your ass. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. Just stop it. Oh, hell. <laughs> yep. I have poisoned the hell out of your mind and memory. Did that scene happen? You know what? No matter what you guess, you're wrong. <laughs> so cool. I've never seen West Side Story. It's good. Uh, if you like musicals. They made a song about it. Um, He's living in the West Side Story. So I'm not gonna say they made a song about it. Stop stepping. <laughs> um, Sakoa, he he just don't. Either he doesn't have it, or he has it and doesn't know how to sell it. But nobody's buying this whole this. this okay, look, look, look. First of all, we got five hours before we find out. No, we don't. We know nobody's buying. Yeah. Look, uh, he got to get rid of the red belt and the red shoes. Yeah. Um, and the metallic-ish charcoal suit with the crushed velvet uh, space black suit, uh, uh, shirt underneath it. No. Why couldn't he just wear black shoes, black pants, a gray belt or black belt, a red shirt, black jacket with the red handkerchief in it with black gloves? And take the dye out of his hair, and and stop wearing the the, the the driver's gloves. Driver's gloves were cool a long time ago. He needs to wear something a little more like sap gloves. That's what he needs. You know the illegal fighting gloves. When you are working a job and you're like a regular everyday person working a job, and then you get promoted, you don't wear what you wore before you got promoted. You wear something else. I get that. But it's like he's trying to... He needs to change his entire look. To what? I don't know. He need to, I, I would cut all the hair off his head. I, I would, I would nope. cut every... Him bald is worse than him blonde. Not bald. Close cut. Nope. That, nope. I done pictured that. Nope. It ain't gonna he work. You gotta do something about that blonde. You need to color it and, and, and cut it into a different style. That, need, that, this, that mohawk this, thing. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm, a hairstyle that would suit him. Straight up. Just take the blonde out. Grow the hair out all over the place. Let it grow out long. Curly. Let it be natural. Tie it off in the back. Why? 
because when you got someone trying to be wild, they need hair swinging around. They need it because it helps. That helps Jacob. Yeah. You and know? he just don't have the presence. He is. He looks He's polite. not charismatic enough to do what he's doing. He looks like he should be somewhere being a very tough babysitter for someone's five-year-old. He don't have the presence. Everything it ain't talk- like he can't get it. He can get it. Solo can get it. Grow that facial hair in. Put the goatee. But the ca- charisma isn't just in what's on the outside. It's got to come from within out. And that's not happening yet. Now, I'm not saying that it couldn't happen. I don't know. But some people just... Tama Tonga needs to be the leader. Tama Tonga has presence. He has charisma. He's you, got all the, You would believe everything that man say. Is him new. standing beside him is, looks so wrong. It looks like he's in the wrong spot. He looks so wrong. Tama should be the leader. Okay. All you got to do was watch him. Tom ain't got to say nothing. No! His expressions His are expressions. Like, like, you know I'm going to kill you in the morning, right? That's how he looks. His expressions <laughs> and the way he carried himself deliver. I just... Tom would be leader. Tonga would be the right-hand man and brother. Okay? And um, Jacob would really be the enforcer. That's who he would be, the enforcer. And what would Sako would be? Uh, yeah. He'd be on his own, trying to do his own thing like that Uso dude. I can see Sokoa being Jacob's temporary, at points, tag partner and handler. I can see that. He's the guy that goes in and he'll direct him to mess somebody up. But he'll also pull him off he knows what to do and say to get Jacob off of somebody to not get a disqualification to fire or sued that would be good but Jacob can talk too well to have a handler that's the other problem he can talk too well he don't need a handler he Jacob is a Sakura. very articulate linguist the man knows but he could be an order for any brand out there Jacob, the way he can talk, he can sell Cheerios to Sugar Smacks. He he, he can do that. I, I really think. You know, y'all make Sugar Smacks, but y'all should really buy these Cheerios. They'd be like, you, you, you got a point. Sokoa needs to start leading the bloodline to more than ass whoopings. Because that's all else, that happened. They, they, they just get their ass beat. Or else he ain't, you know, he ain't got a belt. No. He's not going to get one no time soon. Nope. So what is to keep them loyal? Exactly. What? You the, you the head of the table. You feeding everybody, but what's everybody eating? Fish? No, swantons and, and, and RKOs. That They call them that. It's Ace Crusher, but okay. Yeah, that's... Something's, something's going to come to a point. Yeah. It could be like, bruh, you weak. You know, hopefully Roman can heal, but when Roman come back, He's going to have to turn it up a billion degrees because he's going to come back as a baby face against his will, against the plan, because his, uh, you know, leukemia Mm -hmm. right there. Sympathy, empathy, well wishes, immediate. And then you see Sokoa and you're like, dude, you got to replace this guy. He sucks. That's how everyone's feeling. Mm -hmm. Sokoa is doing the best he can with what he's got. He is. But he looks more like Vito Corleone, you know, with a great amount of Sonny in him. That's what it's like. I'm the boss. I dress well, but I'm sort of mentally unkempt. (laughs) You know, he dresses like he should never see action. He should be behind the desk calling shots. That'd be a good role for him. But when he come out to wrestle, to fight, he's got to look strong. And he don't look strong. Roman Reigns looks strong. 
in ring style, Roman was good. I wasn't really impressed by him, but I got it. I understood. I got the memo. I understood the message. But they got to find, they're trying to find a way to get Roman and Rock together for a fight. But the way this is going, because they got to make these audibles, and then you got to turn the audible back into what you initially wanted. That that's what you call a that's what a booker got to do. Mm-hmm. Booker's got to go through that, you know. So we gonna see what happens. I'm curious how this is all gonna play out, and I really hope you know Roman does well. Even though during the doing the uh, tribute to his dad, they calling out his real name. I was like, don't 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 do that. That's that's your star, you yeah. know. Use stage name only. But yeah, it was the Sokoa needs more and I don't think I truly do not believe that in general management there will they will, they're not gonna let him do what he needs to do. Because I can see a few ways of Sokoa being better and a threat and being taken serious. But they're not gonna let that happen. They're not. I think some of the folks on SmackDown got the wrong alignment. I think you're right about Cody probably being a much better heel because I don't, I do not buy. I don't know why I don't buy him as face as a face. It's just Undertaker or Mark Calloway. He was the one that bought that up, and I was like, huh. And I thought about it. What I seen of Cody, I was like, yeah. But he yeah. needs to be a heel far different than he's been in the in the past. Because when he first came along, he was a heel, and he was annoying, a little sniveling. We don't need no more sniveling. Um, a lot. I know this movie is way over a lot of you, the, the audience's head, but the Five Heartbeats. It was a guy, Robert Townsend. He played his character name was Duck. It was like you good. They told him you good, but once you go through some pain, you'll become great. And that's exactly what happened. Mm-hmm. You know. So we're going we're going to see how this all plays out over time, and. uh Oh, yeah, see, it's just going to rain. A little blip with the cloud and the little drops there and stuff. Yay. You know, I don't know if this is from Beryl or not, but it is what it is. Beryl's coming. It's going to be what it is, you know? Hurricane Big Beryl. But with Bloodline the way it is, it's time for Stop it. Come on. It's time for an ass whooping. Yeah. But you stop it. <laughs> <sighs> It's been Cedric and Cedric for CRS and Commentary on SmackDown. We want y'all to be cool, be chill, be safe, and we'll see you. Stop it. Next time.